Okay, so now uh, for the gradients. Okay, so that's that's going to be a little tricky. Let's have a look at the equations. Okay, so let's. So this is um, a general term that's known as as backpropagation. Okay, so basically we're going to start here and we're going to work our way. We're going to start with the output and work our way towards the input, right? Because from the output, right, I can calculate the L2 loss. So the first thing I can do is calculate the gradient uh, that I need to update these weights, right? So I need the gradient for the hidden output. So that's the derivative here. That's exactly like before. Well, actually, so that's, that's exactly like before. So the only difference is before I had x hidden here and now I have y hidden. So let's do that. Okay, so I now have a gradient for hidden output. And oh, I'm gonna, so that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna start to get a little complicated again. So let me rewrite this in terms of functions. So I'm going to get rid of this, and I just want to be able to say um, that I want the derivative of the activation. Activation uh, given to be y predicted. So I need to go up here and make a function. activation uh, that takes an input x and oh, I need a colon here and uh, so I want x times 1 minus x Make this a little pretty. Oops. And now I need to return it. Boy, not typing well today. Okay, so we need to run that. And now, yes, now this should be okay, I think. Um, no, I need to, that needs to be multiplied by y hidden. Let's just go back and check. Right, that needs to be multiplied by y hidden. Okay, let's see if that works. M yeah, mismatch dimensions. Okay, so let's, uh, let's play the dimension game. Okay, so... I need the shape of the two things I'm trying to multiply. So that's that would that would be this. What's the shape of that? And what's the shape of yh? And I should let's remove some of these other. This is just confusing things. Ah, okay. Yes, so remember, so the, uh, the rules of multiplication is that this value here needs to be equal to this value here. So the number of columns in this matrix needs to be equal to the number of rows in this matrix. So I need to flip, I need to flip that one so it's 4, 3. So that means this needs to be transposed. Posed. So let's see if that solves it. Yes, okay. So... That is my gradient between the hidden and the output layer. Okay, so now I need a gradient for the input hidden layer. Okay, so let's go back and look at the equations. So here's where things start to get uh, sort of complicated. Um, so let's uh, focus on the left-hand side here. And so, so basically all you have is just a chain rule applied over and over again. And I'm not really going to go through everything. You can just pause the video and look at it. 
or you can just uh, skip to the very end here and, and realize that this is what we need to implement. Uh, so we need to calculate this, which I call the, the hidden error, and then this, which is uh, basically just a derivative of the activation function, and we've calculated something uh, very similar before. So let's, uh, let's, let's try to implement it, and then we'll come back to this equation as I point out a few things. So uh, just, let's just remember, the first thing we need uh, to calculate is the hidden error, and that is the error times the derivative of the activation function times uh, the weights connecting the hidden and output layer. Okay, so I need, in addition to the error, I need a hidden error. Um, and actually, let me just let me just move this. Uh, that really should go down here where we use it. Okay, so we need the hidden error, and so that is the error times uh, the activation, the derivative of the activation. Um, and then we need to multiply this times the hidden, the, the weights connecting the hidden and output layer. Okay, but there's, there's, one, there's one thing here that we have to uh, be a little careful of. So let's go back to the equation. And so that, that comes up in this term here. So this is the derivative of this term with respect to the hidden y coming out here. And so the thing to be to notice is that only two of the three terms here depend on, on, on y hidden. So the first term here doesn't depend on y hidden and that term is actually zero. So there, instead of three terms here, there's really only two, two non-zero terms, and that's these two. So we have to remove this term here. This term here does not enter here. Okay, and so let's, let's do that. So in order to do that, um, the way you do it is like this. So it's a little bit complicated, so I'll just, I'll just write it and um, sort of show you that it does what it should. So let's, before um, we execute it, so let's just um, print out this so, and this so we can see the difference. And, oh, okay, it doesn't like this, that's sort of a half finish. So, yes, so you can see here that, that this thing here basically just removes the first term here in, in the matrix. So that's exactly what we want. Okay, uh, so I can see we're already here, we have a mismatch, uh, the dimensions, and I should probably, I have to be a little careful here. Uh, so that should be this entire matrix multiplied by the weights. Uh, let's see if I still get the problem. Yes, okay. So what I want to do is figure out the shape of this. And figure out the shape of this. Okay, so that's the that's the problem here. Uh, so these two numbers have to be equal. I can make them equal by transposing this matrix here. So let's let's try that. So that's T and T here. Yes, so we can see. So that works out. We now have the hidden error. Uh, so we don't need this. Uh, so now we can calculate the gradient. 
So that is minus 1 over n. So let's just remind ourselves in the equation. So I have the hidden error here, and now I want to multiply that, that by the derivative of the activation function times my, my input x. Uh, there's actually, while we're on this equation, right, there's something, um, there's another thing here. So we need to, I'm taking the derivative of this act uh, of respect to these um, inputs here, right? So the the basically the outputs from here, and so I only have there's only two of these three hidden nodes that have to that that are connected to this layer, right? So only so the bias node is not connected, the bias uh, uh, node in the hidden layer is not connected to the input layer. So again, I have to skip uh, the first one here uh, because I, I added earlier. I'll show you in the code. So uh, what I'm saying is here, uh, well, let me, just, let me just write it out and then you'll, then you'll see what I mean. So we have the hidden error and I need to multiply that by the derivative um, let me try to pretty this up a little. So put some spaces in between. And so I have to multiply that by the derivative of the of yh here. And then I need to multiply that by my input x values. Okay, and, and the point I'm making here is that when we the first calculate yh, uh, we do that on this line, and then because we now multiply it by the weights separating the hidden and the output layer, we add a 1. Okay, so, but it's really only these two yh's that we want to use. Okay, so I have to skip the first one, and I'll use the same trick um, as I did before. It's just that it has a different dimension, uh, rows instead of columns, and so I have to use I have to write it like this instead. So, so just uh, just trust me on that one. Or you can print things out if the the, the shapes out if you don't believe me. Okay, uh, so that should work. And, and ah, that is okay. That I wrote my error, my hidden error, like this. Let's see now. Ah, okay, so could not be broadcast together. They have these shapes, and that is, a, so the problem is these two, All right? So here I'm not doing a matrix multiply, I'm doing a normal multiply, so, so now the dimensions have to be identical and not flipped, and so in order to make this identical to this, uh, I, can just, I can just transpose that. Okay. Uh, so that seems to work, uh, and I don't need this line anymore. Uh, well, I need to modify this line now because now I have to let me put a space in here. All right, I have to update the weights. So the hidden um, output weights are let me pretty this up. Uh, out, updated using the hidden output and the input hidden uh, weights are, are updated by the gradient for the input hidden. Okay, and then I can still print out uh, an error here if I want, and here I can print out why predicted. Okay, so let's see. If I run that, uh, that's only after one epoch, uh, so obviously let's give it some more and see if this converges. 
Well, it's starting to, but very slowly. Um, let's try to increase the learning rate and see if it'll allow that. Yes, uh, but you can see we're still uh, pretty far off. We want 0, 1, 1, 0 here. So let's try to give it 10,000. No, 50,000 maybe? Ah, okay, yes. So here you can see, um, yeah, we get what we want here, 0, 1, 1, and 0. It's probably clearer here if I add it uh, to my data frame. So we're going to make a new column here called Y predicted. That's Y predicted. And here we just want, uh, so this is a vector. And so, uh, sorry, a matrix, right? Because so we just want the first row of that, and then we want to show the data. Yes. So here you can see um, point zero zero should be zero. We have something very close to zero. Point zero one and one zero should both be close to one, and that is indeed the case. And finally, um, the last point is close to zero. Excellent. Uh, last thing to do, I think, is to plot the decision line. So let's say we don't need this because we have so few points. And I can come up here and get my scatter plot. So uh, let's see if that's working first. So that works. And so now I need, uh, now I have two decision lines because I have two sets of input hidden weights. Uh, actually, let me just print that out here. So weights input hidden, right? I have two sets. So this is uh, the first set of weights. This is the bias. This is the second set of weights. Um, and so in order to make the decision line, Uh, down here. So I'm now working, so that's decision boundary one, and I have a matrix now, so I want this to be the zero, zero. Um, I don't need to divide by a hundred. This is my zero, one. And for my data here, um, yeah, I guess I'm using x1. as my x-axis, and then w2, so that should be the, the first one. And I don't need that anymore. And then I can make A similar one for two, um, and so that should be one zero, one one, and one two. Let's see if that works. Oh, I need to plot it. So this is x one, and this is decision boundary one, and then I need a similar one for two. And let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, this is W input hidden. Like this, and there you go. Yes, so, um, right, these two lines clearly separate the yellow points from the blue points. Excellent. So we've now written our first neural network code.